Long before the arrival of European ships that would shape the settlements on the shores of Port Phillip Bay, the indigenous people of the Yellowkit Willem tribe of the Kulin nation called Hobson's Bay home. The first survey by the English Navy of the estuary at the mouth of the Yarra River was in 1803. This natural bay and fertile coast was named Point Jellybrand and it took another 30 years before a small group of sheep and cattle farmers, shipping merchants and settlers began to sketch out the form of a village and in 1837 Williamstown was named and the first streets were laid. This was early colonial time and the future of this vast new land was cut by the risk of adventure and the hope of good fortune, but more by hard work. The town quickly becomes a major cargo port and the lodging houses were shelter for the shifting population of portside workers, seafarers and fishermen, drifters and gold hunters, traders and convict labour. Wealth created by the Victorian gold rush translated into greater development of the town and by 1858 Williamstown's two original hotels had grown to 17 and in the next five years there were 26. Cricket had been played here since 1852 and in the following years sporting pastimes and the building of the Williamstown Racecourse in 1872 were to recognise the settlement as a place people wanted to live and enjoy. With the support of local officials, members of the hotel trade and many pubs, a man named Horace Norman helped form a new sporting club. He was named the first captain. The year was 1864 and the game of Australian rules football had come to Williamstown. From its birth through to the end of the century, the club accomplishes sparingly, showing brief form to win a Junior Challenge Cup against South Melbourne in 1876. The club nurtures and celebrates the sustained effort of great players, Toddy Fitzpatrick, Jasper Jones and Walter Warren. However, struggling to sustain any feat of triumph and in a game versus Footscray in the last year of the century, Williamstown records its lowest ever score, kicking only three behinds. Sporting pioneers had cast a future for the town and the turn of the new century would prove to be a threshold. The challenge now was to create something the village could stand by, something to aspire to and be proud of, something to hold close and guard, something to call their own. That something would not only be measured by success on the sporting field, but also seen and felt in spirit by those who wore the colours. In the next 60 years, Williamstown would become a competition force unmatched in the history of the Victorian Football Association. The Seagulls were about to take flight.